Hi guys, so uh, we're back with yet another um, tutorial for Unity and today we're going to be uh, trying to do a few things that I haven't done yet and I'd say they were sort of um, missing from the, um, from the game. The, um, the tanks have no collisions and that is kind of weird. Um, and, and yeah, that, that, that makes no sense. So I'm gonna add collisions to tanks, and I am gonna also uh, add the um, a little bit of health, particularly to the AA tank, so that we can kill the AA tank. Okay, because I, I, yeah, I don't want us to be killed. Yeah, no nice. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add collision to tanks. That's probably gonna um, make this route a little bit not so good. So maybe we will change it. Yeah, um, I don't know. We will. We will see. Maybe we will change the patrol route a little bit. Um, I don't know. I mean, the first one, something like there. The second one could be here. The third one could go here, and the fourth one could be uh, something like here. Yep. I suppose that should be okay. Um, yeah, and probably the player tank should start somewhere um, like the. Anyway, let's uh, open the. Uh, if, if it is, then it will go here, right? First thing, though, yeah, that's okay. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to update the uh, player tank prefab. And we're gonna add the um, colliders sub object. Right now, I'm gonna just create a um, cube. I'll put it up here. Make a collider that is sort of as big as the um, tank, a little bit smaller because otherwise it's a bit annoying. It's gonna make it a little bit higher. That's big, yeah. something like this. Um, another cube. Box. Now we're gonna do a upper box. Okay, the upper box is maybe something like this. Don't think we need the upper box, but I think it's uh, well maybe for the collisions of the of the spoolets is gonna be okay. Yeah, something like this. Something like this, probably a little bit less, yeah. yeah. Now, these two collision boxes don't need neither mesh renderer or the mesh filter. That's cool. I mean, honestly, this is sort of like a if the upper box is an upper sphere. Um, yeah, I think I like it better with a sphere. Yeah, we're gonna put it down a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. We have a, um, a sphere and um, a box. That's cool. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Um, we can save it. And we'll have to do the same thing for the AI. But uh, one of the things that we may want to do with that, and I forgot to do it before, is Okay, if we have collisions, then we need a rigid, and this is something that is going to be moving, it needs a rigid body, because um, anything that moves and has collisions should have a rigid body, unless it's a character, which, you know, has a character that has a character controller, because that has a, a its own um, a rigid body inside. 
So we're gonna put it 100. We're gonna remove the gravity thing because we're already doing all the movement ourselves. Um, and I think I'm gonna leave it like this. Okay. So if we just run the game now, it should have at least collisions, although, boink, yeah. It has this problem, yeah. If we add the gravity, then. No, not here. Um, yeah, it has this problem here, which is that basically it collides with. There is no, um, there is no gravity. It's not gonna get down. Okay, so one of the things that we may want to do in this case is um, make sure that the tank is always on the floor, and at least it doesn't change its position from the in, in the Y component. At least for this level, we know it's all it's all um, uh, a plane. If we had uh, mountains and stuff like that, then probably we want to do something else. But this is not the case here, and that complicates things. And I don't want to deal with that just yet. We'll deal with that uh, in probably in our next uh, in in the character tutorials because we'll want that to be able to go up and down. We may be using a character controller, maybe we'll do our own character controller, probably we use the character controller from Unity. But anyway, um, in this case we're going to simplify things a lot by um, assuming that this is a plane and that we're always going to be on, a, on that plane. So in the movement controller, the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be um, Acquiring the uh, initial this is Y, and in the start, we get the Y, and in the move, we make sure always. Uh, that we keep the same Y. So instead of doing these, what we've been doing is uh, uh, we're gonna be doing it here. Sure, the Y uh, of the tank is always the initial one. This is not gonna. Um, okay. This is not going to be uh, very good in, in, in some cases, but let's um, let's get on with it. Oh, also, let's get the rigid body. If we're going to be moving the tank, we want to usually uh, you want to use the rigid body to move it. So instead of saying transform position plus equals, which is the original one, we're gonna be doing read body move position to the new position, which is transform dot position plus well times dt. Also, transform your angles uh, here. Mm. So, I mean, well, we could try to use okay, the initial uh, rotation as a reference, but instead, well, I mean, we know that the player tag is always going to be the initial rotation, so it's just usually, or at least. And we're gonna be keeping the rotation in the uh, only in the Y component. So we're gonna do two things for that. Well, let's okay. I I didn't do the Y thing, but let's see what happens now. There we go. We're still having this problem because we didn't do the Y, but still, so. Um, what we're going to be doing here is at the end 
up here in the new position, we're gonna say that the new position uh, is equal to in y. And we're always moving to the initial position. So to the initial y position. But this is not probably gonna fix completely the problem with the with the rotations. Oh yeah, the uh, tank doesn't have a rigid body. Um, yeah, we haven't changed. We should do the same thing we've done with the later tank with the A tank. But since honestly, it's a lot, it's a lot easier to copy this um, component. I'm gonna copy this component. I'm gonna duplicate this. I call it AI tank two. I'm gonna get this component here. Sorry, uh, base component is new. I'm gonna move it up. And remove this one. And I am just going to change the corner here. So it was blue. And blue. There we go. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna this is four waypoints, which we're gonna have to redo. Get rid. Oh, yeah. Get rid of it. And we have the new AA tank. For instance, here. Let's say that they are. Um, the four waypoints are gonna be. These four waypoints. There we go. Now we have the four waypoints. Everything is the same. We can get rid of the old AI tank, and change the name of our AI tank. There we go. So now we have a um, an AA tank with collisions, which is good. I find it kind of weird. It's like if, like, there is. This is not colliding with the ground. That's right. It's not colliding with anything. I don't know. Sometimes it's like finding some collisions, which is kind of weird. the tank which is good okay so we're having problems with the collisions right well um, we can do a lot of things like removing collisions with the ground stuff like that the first thing but uh, the first thing we can do is make sure that the angles are always the same here we're gonna um, so are the we can change the rotation with the move rotation, but the thing is, we know that the, um, the current angles are going to be uh, zero something zero. Okay, so let's see what happens now when we collide against the wall. We're sort of okay-ish, but not completely, because this is a little bit going down, right? It's still, it's not completely all right, but it's so okay-ish that it's not all right. What we want is the player not to to change their uh, x and z angles in the Euler angles when we're moving. So. Um, So 
So we do this transform your angles to y. Vector 3, uh, new angles is going to be new vector 3, so it's 0. Prep your angle plus all these. Then plot angle offset is going to be that. And 0. 0.0. And then we can just say, okay, your angles is new your angles. This is going to be uh, changing that exactly. Now, so matter if we have moved. The tank is always keeping the same. Uh, it's not doesn't matter what happens. This this angle is never gonna change. Okay, good. But still, it's uh, kind of doing weird things. So, and a lot of the um, tools that we have in our in our tool set is uh, this thing here, the constraints. So we don't want the tank to go up and down in the y direction, and we don't want it to rotate in the x and z directions. Good. Then let's freeze those constraints so that they are well. And let's do it in the in the um, in the prefab, if because that way um, it applies to every tank. One here. Tank is has it applied, yeah. And then the player tank has it too, yep. Yeah. Cool. So both of them have these um, constraints set, and that means that they are not going to be uh, they shouldn't try to move in those directions. Which probably could have helped. We could say um, fix the problem that we had before. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> so that's right. What is the problem here? So for some reason, it's um, sometimes finding collisions or getting some something that is um, generating. Issues with the um, so now okay. Let's see if this. So you see, the tank is now moving all the time. Big why? Because it it collided with something, and we um we didn't do anything. It just collided. It was uh, pulled apart. But then, uh, since we have no friction the drag is zero it is moving like uh, it, it keeps the movement due to the first uh, newton's law until it hits something else until another force is applied so what do we want to do to so in here in the movement we want to avoid them um, So we don't want external forces to be applied to this. So RB dot velocity is gonna be a zero zero zero. RB dot angular velocity is gonna be zero zero zero. And we're gonna do this at the start of the of the um, of the function. That way we just even if we if the move position generated the velocity Next thing it will be uh, produced, uh, removed. Sorry. 
Yeah, another problem with these is uh, we're calling this in the update. And this should be called in the fixed update. Because um, physics only happen in the, um, in the fixed update. Yeah, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? Okay, seems to be working. Seems to be working, that's cool. I mean, it's not the best um, way of doing it, but it works. One of the things, one of the issues that we have here is that since we're not doing anything when we're gliding, we sort of keep the, the uh, inertia. Which is okay is when we go like this, but it's not so nice when we just hit it head first and then we stop and then we try to go back and it takes quite a bit. Still, it's a it's not a big deal. It's something we can live with. And yeah, so we're gonna leave it like that. We're not trying to you know uh, do a full tanks game. We're just trying to. Uh, teach some concepts that are going to be useful when you're doing this. So we have added um, movement. This could be a... Uh, this is using the move position and the... and by using here the transform unit angles. We, sh we could use the... the... the move rotation, right? How could we do that? So... Um, there are two options. So uh, Euler, let's. So one option is to go and, and create a quaternion from the Euler angles, which is actually a very convenient one. And instead of using these, sorry, uh, we do this. RB. Rotation in rot. The other option would be to get the um, initial rotation in quaternion, uh, create a new quaternion to add the rotation, and then uh, do um, the composition, the, the, the addition. That's not, uh, that's a bit annoying and probably not as efficient necessarily as this because we're, I mean, we're gonna be generating a rotation again well it could be a little bit I don't know it depends on how efficient it is to go from your angles to quaternion I don't know to be honest uh, for this example I think this is the easiest way and I'm gonna stick with it so yeah it seems to be working just as well Seems to be working well. It doesn't make much of a difference, to be honest, with a transform. Yeah, good. I hit the tank. So, okay, we have the collisions of the uh, rigid body. We're moving it. So we have the collisions for tank. We have a rigid body. We're moving it with a rigid body. So, what is missing? Well, some health. So we can detect collisions against the tank and reduce the health. For that, we're gonna create a uh, a new component that we can add both to the air and to the player tank. Uh, we're, gonna, mm, we're gonna call it tank health, tank health simply. 
is going to be a simple uh, component that is going to have a whoops health yep the health of the tank and we'll uh, destroy the tank so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a public float max health we're gonna set it to 100 for instance I don't, I don't know I don't care much and we can have a private attribute we're just gonna call we call health and health is gonna be initialized in the start to max health even by default I'm gonna give it a non-zero number I'm gonna Create a property because this may be useful later, but anyway, we're not gonna have a later, but okay. Return health. So we can access the health from property, which if we wanted to do a HUD with a with a with a bar that tells what's the health of it of a tank, we could use this. And in the update we are not gonna be doing anything because really this is not trying to do anything every tick, just uh, keeping the health. What we do need on the other hand is a um, to be notified when um, someone is doing damage to us. So um, this function is going to be used um, We could even have information on who damages or whatever, but I'm not going to be passing it to all. So this is going to be doing some damage to the health and if the health reaches zero or is below zero then we're going to communicate everyone that wants to know about it that we are dead. Okay? So how are we going to communicate it is uh, something that we'll see soon but for the time being we're going to, we're going to just do the, the, the easy part. So basically reduce health health is uh, health minus equals damage and if health is uh, so we are still and trigger um, Event. So, what is an event? Uh, C# -sharp has this thing called delegates and events, which basically are um, a delegate is like um, it's it's like a type that defines a function, and you could you can use it in an event to define what kind of function responds to what to a certain type of. Um, uh, event that you define so um, I mean if you want more information on events and, and delegates in C sharp I recommend you go to the um, to the um, uh, MSDN documentation on the subject and I'll try to remember and leave uh, links to that in the description below and if you need more information just let me know and I'll try to find some tutorials or something on the internet so that I can point you to, to them. We're gonna use them assuming that you understand and know what they are. So if you don't, please go and check those out first because otherwise you may, you may not understand what we're doing here. So I'd like to have my um, delegates 
in our region along with other strokes that I define within my class. We're gonna call it void um, tank health delegate tank health for instance. Use communicating tank health events. Basically, if we had another another tank event, we're gonna have one to to tell any everyone that we have been uh, hit. But we could have all this like uh, when every time we're damaged, we we show an event, so that we trigger the event, and if the health is below a certain margin, then um, then maybe we want to trigger some particles to show that the tank is. Is cranky and is getting damaged, and maybe I don't know um, if we uh, if we can be um, re the health can be regenerated. Maybe one another when when that happens, stuff like that. Anyway, we're only gonna find one here. This event. We cannot remove this. This is not. Okay. So basically, we say if tank destroyed event is not null, that means if someone is interested in knowing when we are being destroyed, then tank destroyed event this. Okay, good. Um, by the way, the event is public so that you can easily um, register yourself as a, um, as, a, as a listener to this event. So, who may want to be listening to this event? Well, definitely the AI or player tank controllers. So the AI tank controller. So in the start, um, we're gonna have tank health. Health is gonna be a get component. Tank health. If health is not null, then we're gonna be registering to the event. Destroyed event that's equal on tank destroyed. So we have to define a callback, a callback function, which is basically a function that is going to be called when this event happens for that event. I like to have all my callbacks in a um, in their own regions. It can be private, it doesn't have to be public. But it has to have the format that we define in the delegate. Okay, so it has to be void, it has to return void, and it has to have a, a single argument of the type time health. So, what do we do here? Uh, we're gonna change the, we're gonna change the, um, state of the uh, player but we need first to define that state so um, this is shooting state uh, but we could have something else like whether what is the um, AI state so if we are dead we don't do anything um, right now I mean to be honest we could we could define a state and have it alive or dead, but what is the point if there is no other there is no other uh, option? Why not use a boolean? We could use like uh, whether we're patrolling, we're shooting, we're dead. It may it may make sense to be honest. Yeah, it makes sense, right? So we can add it to this thing here. So we could be patrolling, we're preparing the suit, or we can be dead. And if we're dead, we do nothing. Let's see. I'm 
take uh, no prepare to shoot up okay, there. When that we don't do anything, but we need to um call this. So basically um So basically it means we don't move and we don't uh, and we don't aim. So um, so the move control inputs are gonna be always zero zero. The uh, and the sh and the shoot the target point is always gonna be the current target point. Um, which means I don't have to update it, and shooting is always going to be false. So we just basically we're just doing this. So when this is happening, uh, we just change the state. Okay, that seems sensible enough. So we have already um, defined a new state. It's in the update. We have uh, registered, uh, registered ourselves uh, for the tank destroyed event. And um, we could, uh, man and we, we have change the state when we when this is when this is received so what do we need we need something that that damages the uh, the tank so we're gonna be doing it here if we hit a tank and destroy ourselves and show an explosion this is what is this or part is doing so um, when we hit the tank what we do is um, hit one of the colliders the colliders of the tank are here so it's gonna be hitting this so we cannot ask this object for the uh, tank health because uh, it doesn't have it oh Now I, now I understand where we were. Before I was, I had the um, the um, the lock on the on the player tank. That's why I was always using uh, this. I was having these uh, always on, even when I changed to the A tank. My mistake. I'm sorry. Anyway, when we hit a collider of the tank, it's going to be one of these uh, two colliders. So these don't have the uh, tank health in this object. It's not in the parent, but in the parent of the parent, in the grandparent, which is here. Uh, no, it's not in the player. It's in the AI. Uh, no, it's not in the AI either because we haven't added yet. <laughs> so uh, let's open the prefab and let's add a uh, tank health. Move up. And move up, move up. Okay, I put it here. I like to have it here. So it's um. So yeah, now the AI tank has a um tank health. Okay, here. So the thing is, this one doesn't know about the tank health. We have to ask one of the parents, right? So in this case, it's gonna be this one. Doesn't know about it. It is the grandparent, the one who knows. So. We're gonna have to ask for it here. So our tank health health is gonna be collision get component 
collision collider get component in parent tank health this is basically saying okay uh, get your collider uh, why is it where is it red get components now get components so um, get your the collider we when we have a collision we have certainly collided with a collider we may not have a rigid body I mean I'm not 100% sure that you will have a uh, game object but what is 100% sure is that you have another collider because if you don't have a collider then what have you collided with it makes no sense right so we get the collider and we ask uh, to get a component in parent of type tank health if we hit with a with a ground or with a wall or whatever this is going to be no but if we hit the AI tank, then we're gonna have a, a valid health. So if health is not null, then health do damage. And we uh, do some damage. How much? Well, we should define the damage probably here. So for instance, let's put it to 25. And that's it. So we are now telling, okay, give me the health component of whatever you have collided with. Oh, if you, you gave me a good, a valid health component, let's use it. Otherwise, we don't. We have a valid health component, we do damage for the amount that we have defined in the public attributes. So this is not going to be easy because hitting it four times is going to be hard. God damn it, stop moving. Don't be easy, don't go so quickly. Oof. This is gonna be hard. Okay, let's make first of all, let's make the uh shell, the bullet, a lot more dangerous, like 150, I know it has only hundred. So that we only need one one uh, hit. And let's make the AI tank a bit slower because it's going too fast. Max speed. Three to five. There we go. And you see the tank is now broken. We can do one last thing. Um, Let's see. We have some some sort of a prefab that we can use for the um, for the explosion, the tank explosion. Oh, that's. Let's see what they want. Oh, good. That's exactly what we want, isn't it? Yeah. So when that happens, um, so oh, yeah. Let's let's see. Uh, well, let's see. We're gonna have a, a little problem. So when this happens, it's uh, we can also show a so explosion. So. Um, we define here a um, public game object tank destroy explosion prefab and if this is not null um, game object new explosion it's gonna be game object instantiate object the original so we are instantiating uh, our explosion. We can. Uh, we are gonna be uh, the new explosion is gonna be transform position is gonna be at our position. Transform position, the explosion, transform rotation is gonna be a uh, our rotation. And I think that's about it.
With this, um, we're gonna see that we have one problem here. It's one small problem is not a big deal though. Hmm. We're not seeing it. No. Oh, that's right because we haven't defined it. Yeah. Hmm. If we don't define the explosion. So the health here, we need this tank explosion. There we go. It's not doesn't seem to be working, does it? Although these are being executed somewhere. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't have a. Um, a Playing awake. Yeah. So. Play tank explosion. We're gonna hit the player awake so that they play when we create the explosion. So, yeah, when we create the explosion, they are. They are the, the particle system is played. There we go. We've seen it. Okay. Mm, I forgot. Yeah, that that is that is working. But what I forgot to do is to show you what is not working. Properly. You see, it is showing the explosion every time we uh, hit the tank, and we only want to show it once. So, why is that? Because we're doing damage even when the, the damage with the health is, is zero. So we're only going to be doing damage if health is bigger than zero. That way we avoid calling this destroy event several times and we avoid sowing this explosion more than once. I think that should be it. There we go. Now we hit it several times, but it's dead. Good. Mm. I'm gonna leave it here. I think I'm gonna be doing a second part where we're gonna be doing just a couple of minor tweaks that I'd like you to consider. So when we hit and kill the AI, I want the um, the turret to go flying away. And. I wanted to also have a small particle system that shows some uh, smoke and doesn't disappear. So I'm going to be doing that in another tutorial. It's going to be a small one, uh, particularly compared to this one, which I'm sorry it's gone for too long. And and that will be it. That will be the last one, the last tutorial on the tanks project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and maybe subscribe. And and well, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.